This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the recording. Hierarchical inheritance. Just to remember, just to have a quick idea, you can also say this as a one to many relationship, like, you know, one parent, many children. That is hierarchical, it means what? Uh, from one parent, uh, we can inherit uh, two or more children. That's what we call hierarchical inheritance, okay? Mm. The point is, uh, when you look at the diagram, you can easily understand that. What is it? Uh, here, all the chains are directly inherited from parent, this, this parent A. But one child doesn't have any direct association with another child. And if you want to have access to one child to another child, it is possible with has the means. Either relation is not applicable between chains. Suppose if you go to multi level inheritance, uh, look at this kind of inheritance. The bottom level class has access to all its top level classes. It's possible with this. So that is possible with the multi level inheritance. But for the hierarchical one parent, from one parent, all child classes are inherited. But one one child doesn't have any direct relation with other child. So each each child are different here. It's like employee and uh, company. Now, if company is a parent, employees are like children. And you know, one employee doesn't give salary to other employees. It's not possible, isn't it? So that's that's kind of relation we can assume for a hierarchical here. So here, what we have to do is uh, we should create separate object for each subclass. Earlier, we concluded in the multi-level or single inheritance or, or you know. This type of inheritance is uh, we understood one thing. If we create object for subclass, then automatically this subclass object can have access to all its superclass members. Whereas in hierarchical inheritance, uh, you should create object uh, a separate object for every subclass. That's what you should do for a hierarchical inheritance. You understand like right? that? Clear? Because here one subclass don't have direct this thing to another subclass. Got it? So that's a simple idea. And the syntax, it's a simple syntax here. We have one parent and we have multiple chains. And all these chains are inherited from one, one parent here. You can see here. Now, child two is not inherited from child one, whereas child two is also inherited from the same parent here. This is a simple idea about a hierarchical inheritance. So, what do you do is just do a small program. Same program, you can uh, try it like this. You can rewrite uh, the same requirement uh, for hierarchical like this. Take a parent like this. You can just take some parent here. Like this same requirement, whatever we have done for single inheritance and multi level. Take a parent A with some uh, properties A, B, and set values and display. Now, this time B should be inherited from A and C should be inherited from B. Now, see what changes we have to make to the previous code to make it uh, applicable for hierarchical inheritance. Okay. Now, B is inherited from A and C is inherited from A. Now inside B, try to find sum of two numbers. Inside C, try to find multiplication of numbers. Okay, and see how you are going to do that. Now here you have to create object for every child class. You should create object for B class as well as for C class. That's what you should do. Okay, so why don't you try it and take, take two minutes time and finish this. Then we have finished single inheritance, multi-level, hierarchical, multiple. Then we will switch to multiple inheritance. Okay, this please try this now.
Yeah, please confirm if you are done. Then we will move to the, we will just uh, execute it once and uh, switch to the next topic. Uh, let us just quickly test it then. So, the difference here is we don't have big difference. Uh, we can use the uh, SDS code here. We have multi level inheritance. So what changes I need to do to this code here to look at this code. One thing is I can use uh, AB of A class in and B class here because uh, B is a child of A class. But in B class, I cannot use this variable C of B class because uh, C is present in B. I cannot use this because now and one more change here I have to do is uh, I should inherit this C from A, not from B. Okay, that is also one more change. Apart from that, uh, apart from that, what uh, I cannot use C here. The uh, variable of B I cannot use C here. That is also one more thing. Now, here, if you see, do you think uh, I can call this sum function on C object? This thing not possible because why? Right? The reason is simple. Because sum is present in B class. Now, now C is not a child of B class, so I cannot have access to sum. Then how can I call sum? I should remove this here. Now I should create a separate object for B as well. So some B B. Now on this B object, we should call what is that? First methods of A class B dot set values B dot uh, Another method. What is it? Display. And then B dot like this. Now this is these are the changes we have to make make to the previous code which we have we have implemented for the multi level methods because this is a hierarchical. We have to rewrite, rewrite this code to fit the hierarchical inheritance for it like that. So you, now you can see the changes which I had made to the code to fit this for hierarchical inheritance. Got it right now. So what do I do right now? I'll just run this code once. 
and you can see here, the outputs are good 10 and 20 and some is 30 that is from b class and 10 20 and the product is 200 this is coming from c class and the inputs are coming from a class and you know c is able to access properties of a or b is able to access properties of a class it's all this is happening because of uh, Inheritance, you know, all this we had a discussion yesterday. I think this is clear for all of you, right? Now. So, this is the area about what is this? Uh, hierarchical. The next one is uh, multiple inheritance. What is multiple? This is many to one, just too easy to remember is many to one, opposite to hierarchical. Many parents, one children. So deriving a child from two or more parent classes, two or more super classes or two or more base classes. And this is what we call, what we call this as a multiple inheritance. Are you following, sir? What you trying to Multiple inheritance is nothing but deriving a child from two or more super classes. Understood. And here, the parents are different. They are independent. They are not. They don't have any relation between one class to another class. When we say parents, it's not our real life uh, parent and husband relationship here. Okay? We don't have such thing here. When I say parents, means multiple parents means don't expect a, a real life uh, this thing. Here, number of parent classes are multiple. Like it might be two or three or four. And from from this, all this, and here, all these parent classes are individual or independent uh, parents. One parent don't have any direct relation with the other parent. And if you want to, it's possible only with the, I mean, with the has a relation here. Okay, right. From all those parents, we inherit one subclass. That is, a, you can name as you like. This, this is only a simple idea. The syntax look like this. You have parent one and parent two. That is, uh, anyhow, all of you know that how to be the individual parent classes are independent classes. Then I have a child here. While inheriting, you just need to do, you just need to do one thing. Earlier, if it is uh, uh, multiple, multi-level or uh, hierarchical, we used to pass one parent. As this is multiple inheritance, uh, uh, the child will have to inherit multiple parents, so multiple classes. So what we do here, we just declare it as a, Parent classes like this. What is that? Parent one, comma, parent two, comma, dot, 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 like this. And then we just take the statements. Please. You get it, guys? This is how we implement uh, uh, multiple inheritance. Now you can see what happens here now. This child class, whatever it is, it can have access to all parents. You can access properties of all parents. Parent one, parent two, everything. And this is simple idea about the multiple inheritance. Got it? So these are all concepts here. You, know, you don't need to worry too much about this implementation because you no, know, you can easily understand like how this implementation happens. I don't think this is very difficult to understand. Even in a real time, once you are really familiar with the objects and classes, these are all simple you know concepts which we apply on top of objects and classes themselves okay so now here an example for all of us we have a parent like this just take a parent like this some some with some values another parent like this but here make sure the method names are different probably i don't think we can have same method names in both the parents it leads to again it will you no know, it doesn't take both methods if that is the case Make sure the simple important uh, point to remember here is uh, let when you have multiple parents, uh, make sure each parent has uh, different method names. That is very important. Otherwise, what happens? You can check it yourself, sir. If you give same parent, same method names in two parents and you try to inherit it to a child like this, what happens? You can check it yourself. You can take a small example for this. Just to understand multi-level inheritance, you can take a class, B class, and a C class. In A, you can declare two variables, A, B, 
and then as usual uh, set data and then there is one method and maybe if you want you can use a method like you know data that is one in b class you can take some x y okay and then uh, you can uh, take a method to set the values here again set data one because i put set data there i put set data one in the b class in a class just set it and get it maybe if you are curious like if i give same method names both in a class and b class and if i try to inherit them to see what happens if you want to just see it you can try with anyhow i will show you while executing the program you don't need to worry about it okay right so in c class what do you do inherit uh, a b to this okay and then uh, just do a small uh, addition or subtraction whatever you like take some uh, instance variable some c or something like result right? Same perform some sum of all the data coming from A class and B class. Just apply some addition on data of A class and uh, B class, and just see the result. That's all. So just try this small use case because just to get quick idea, I don't think this is difficult to implement. So finish it, then we will talk about hybrid inheritance. And that hybrid in sense, it's simple. It's not that difficult. But you try this first. Okay. So first you test with all the use cases. If methods are same, what happens? If methods are different, what happens? That then you just you, you can cross check yourself. It doesn't you don't need a, it's not something too confusing concept there. It's not too difficult as well. You can try it just by changing the method names and see what happens if you try to inherit it to C class. That's all okay. Yeah. Need to understand Harish. We can inherit. We have to inherit both, right? C of V means what? It is a. 
when you say just CFB, you are just inheriting only one class. You get the point here. Harish. Okay. So the, it's, uh, the order of inheritance is up to you. Suppose you say A comma B, first A is inherited, then B is inherited. If you say uh, B comma A, is inherited and then A is inherited. Uh, not here, sir. Uh, multi level inheritance. This is multiple, right? In multi level. Uh... Oh, in multi level, the, I think in the comment you put it as multiple. So that's oh, the sorry. Yeah. yeah, multi, yeah, multiple level. I, in multi level, I'm talking. Yeah, in the multi level, what is your question? Yeah, Insta. Okay. This is multi level. What is your question? We inherit A to B, uh, B to C. B to C. Okay, C. okay. B is getting yes, A yes. and C is getting B. You got it right. Huh? Then it yes. becomes multi level. Suppose if you, say, okay. if you say C of A, then it becomes hierarchical. It doesn't become multi level. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, got it. Shall I test this code now? I think you are done, right? Okay, let me just quickly test it. Then. Not this one, I'm sorry. I told you take two variables in A case. That is fine. I don't need to change A. Let it be there like that. And take B. I don't need sum now. Even we can continue with B also. This time B should be an independent class. Then uh, I told you to take one more, two more variables here. Something like uh, set data. Then you can declare like, you know, self dot x equal to some 30 and self dot y equal to some 30 something like that okay then you take another method def display maybe you can print it so here i am just taking it as show the display i put it as show I will, I will show you, like, you know, we'll test, like, uh, if methods are same both in A class and B class, what happens? We will even test that use case as well, okay, that scenario as well. Print of uh, self dot x and then uh, print of uh, self dot x. Okay. So that's it. Now, you take class C, inherit A, B together to this class C. And then uh, you can do product, nothing to worry. You can continue with the same code, no need, big, no need of big changes to this. Now I have done product of A, B. And these two are coming from A class. And into self dot X into self dot Y. So I'm done with uh, multi-level inheritance. So I have done product in the C class by using the properties of A class as well as B class. Okay, now create an object for C. So you don't need to create object for A or B, but if you create for C, that is sufficient. Maybe if you want, you can create for A and B as uh, A and B as well. It's up to you. But for now. What I'm doing is I am creating an object for my subclass that is C class. So I'm doing now created object 
I call set, I call set value set display. That is one thing. Second thing, C dot theta, then C dot two. If you see, I am able to call all the members of a parent classes on this child class C. This is what happens with inheritance. We know that. And finally, we are trying to call multiplication here. Let's run the code, go to the run and then say run it. We got perfect output here. So from A B we got 1020. And from uh, sorry, from A class we got 1020. And from B class we have we got uh, uh, 2030. And finally, what is that? The product of all that. It gives some uh, how much is this? Uh, one lakh forty thousand. It's giving me that. Okay. That's all. This is the idea about what. And here we have tested multiple inheritance. But let's quickly observe a few more cons here. We have seen the pros. Pros means which are positive. Let's test some uh, uh, negative use cases. I mean, a few more use cases here. Scenarios. Suppose if methods are same in both the classes, both the parents. Here I have set values. Okay. And here I have display. One method is enough to understand the concept. You don't need every method to be same in A and B classes. But this time, you know, when you look at this code, you can easily understand what is that. My method in A class and B class is same here. We have set values. Now, when I try to inherit in C class, what happens? Do you get any compilation error or any other? Do you have any other problem? We'll just check it out once. Okay. Now here, when I say C dot set values, you can understand one thing here. When I say C dot set values, I can call the set values only for one time on C reference. Even though, even though C is inheriting A and B, one thing what we should under what we can understand is it's not possible for me to call set values of both A class and B class separately. On C reference, I can call it just for only one time, not for two times, that is one thing. Second thing, if you don't, uh, now the question is, here which set values is called? When I call it for one time, then it is called only for one time, isn't it? It is not called, called for two times. And if it is called for one time, from which class this is called? Is it from A class or B class? That's, that is another question. Okay, just to understand that, if you just run that program, then you automatically, you'll know that. You get an idea there, okay? So what do you do now? Just run the code. Okay, it is saying some issues. You can remove this C because the problem with C is that if you don't call set values here, uh, sorry, if you don't call set values here, or if then you cannot call show also because X and Y are present in set values, means that these are dependent on one another. That is one thing. Second thing is obviously you get error. What is that with uh, even here also? When I guess when I call set values from one class, then then only I can call either I can use AB or XY. And which is called here, it is clearly showing to me it is calling the set values method from A class, not from B class, because the values tells the truth here. Okay. 10 and 20 are declared in A class, not in B class. Then means which set values method is called here? The method in the A class is called here. What about the method in B class? Do you think? Uh, is it not is it not calling b or is it completely avoiding uh, in inheriting b class uh, or what is that happening here to understand that okay to cross check it it is not inheriting b or not or uh, it's just only throwing error because there are uh, the method ambiguity is there with a and b this is an ambiguous ambiguous situation so when there is ambiguity then what your python is doing then it is just for, for first time it is trying to call from A and it is uh, avoiding to call from B here. And uh, suppose you do one thing, you are not calling it, no issues. Then remove these two variables now. Now you try to run it 
and let us uh, test it quickly. I'm just showing you here. See here, print. This is just only for testing whether B gets inherited or not. If B is inherited, but as the ambiguity is there with methods, is it avoiding in, you know calling these methods? That is one question. Okay, here also I might put display now just for testing purposes. Or is it completely avoiding inheritance? These are the two possible things for us. But what I am suspecting is, uh, I am assuming it will inherit B also, but as there is a ambiguity with the methods set values and display, it might uh, it might first give priority to the order of inheritance. You know, as per the order. We are inheriting A class first. Then it will try to invoke methods of A, that is set values and display. And it will avoid methods from B because even they are having identical signatures, same signatures. So what happens here? It will try to avoid B class methods, giving priority to A class methods when both methods are declared with same signatures. Got it right? Because this situation leads to ambiguity to avoid that it has to get priority here. That is that means is that uh, does it does it mean that it is completely avoiding inheriting B class or only it is applicable for the ambiguity ambiguous methods that we have to check here. Just you do one thing on C here at this level you just say C dot another method I just declared no call m1 run this then you get an idea uh, c dot show where is show here let me comment this as well because it is an ambiguous method now you got hello here means what it is inheriting b class but wherever there are ambiguous methods only for that methods it is throwing an error got it right it is not trying to call those methods here it is giving priority to the A class method. Suppose if I change the order here, if I put B here and if I put A here, then the priority is given to which class methods for B class methods than A class methods when methods are same in both A and B classes. Method signatures are same. You get my point. So does inheritance is does inheritance is happening or not from both classes? happens but when methods are having same signatures in both a and b it will give the priority to the methods of classes as per order of inheritance suppose if a is inherited first and b is later then the methods of a are inherited are called and then methods from b are ignored got it similarly when you do vice versa if you inherit b class first and a class next then the methods of B class has priority than A class methods. Okay, first methods of B class methods are called and then the methods of A are ignored. Likewise, it happens like that, guys. What you tried to. This is the idea about what is that? A simple uh, scenario about uh, this thing here. Anyhow, recommended is when you have two classes like this. Uh, one, one good programming practice is uh, have different methods with different names, not with same names. Right? That will avoid the ambiguity problem with the child class. Otherwise, uh, again, we have seen a couple of issues here, a couple of cons here this time. Want to have that, what do we do? We can overcome that issue just choosing different method names. Is that clear for all of you? So this is the idea about uh, multiple inheritance case. Next one. One more type of inheritance is there. What we call it as a... All of you tested this, sir? All of you are clear? Everybody is clear and uh, tested. What about others uh, apart from Srikanta? How about others? All of you are good? Okay, thank you for the confirmation. 
Next one. And the last use case, what we call hybrid inheritance. We have up to multi here, but you can take one more requirement, what we call it as a hybrid. Hybrid inheritance means a combination of two or more inheritances. Okay, the best example people always give for hybrid inheritance in programming is this. What is that? For hybrid inheritance, you have a class like this A. From A, you inherit two classes B and C. And from again, uh, these two, you inherit one more class D here. So this is how it is. A and B are inherited from where? From A class. Okay. Sorry. It might be I took it in a different order, not a problem. So B and C are inherited from A class. And uh, D is inherited from B and C. It looks like a, like a little diamond here also. This is one of the best use case people give for either, sorry, hybrid inheritance. And this has almost all, it covers uh, hierarchical inheritance as well as uh, multiple inheritance. It covers both. Got it right? Huh? And even it has a multi level also involved here because when you look at the left, uh, no. When you look at only at this particular uh, path, it is a kind of a multi level. Correct? If you likewise, if you look at the right side, it is also a kind of multi level A to C and C to D. Got it right? In, uh, in a way, this, this is one of the best examples for hybrid inheritance. Usually, in most of the websites are textbooks, most standard textbooks. Uh, people use this example also. When you are using this, when you are trying to work with this example, sometimes you come across an issue, the same ambiguity issue. Just now we have discussed with multiple inheritance. Even the same issue comes with the uh, same issue come with the which one? Even it comes with the hybrid inheritance as well. So in such issue where the child class has ambiguity with parent class methods, such issue we call it as here in this hybrid inheritance, uh, we call it as uh, something with a very catchy name, people call it as a deadly diamond problem. Technically, we call it as what is that? Deadly diamond problem. So this is there in C++ and they have avoided that, you know, they try to overcome that problem with the virtual base class concept. But in Java, we don't have such issue. We don't have such virtual base classes. So they have Avoided multi uh, multiple inherit sorry hybrid inheritance in uh, Java even multiple inheritance is avoided in Java because of this reason only the ambiguity issues. But in Python somehow it supports. We don't have a problem in Python. But you need to get an idea about this problem because you know this is there in Java C plus you know, C C even C sharp. Most of the languages uh, this multiple inherits multiple inheritance are. Hybrid inheritance is not supported directly with this kind of a combination. Okay, of course you can create hybrid with any other types, but not this. Got it right. So this is a simple scenario. Got it right. I will take a small example to create hybrid inheritance. Hybrid means combination of any two inheritances. combination of uh, any two inheritances like you, know, you have a class then you take two variables are one is also enough this time just set that data for a you take b take a variable b in that and again set b take a method set b here instead of set data so take a method set a and another class c inheritor a b 
and find some sum in this using that variables of a and b classes okay you declare here a c variable variable c and initialize your result to c here make it as instance next take a d class okay mm. a b c now these two are independent classes right now what i need is a uh, uh, take a d d must inherit what so one i'm one minute guys i'm just trying to understand this time you do one thing first one is hierarchical right inherit b from a inherit c from a now the here try apply multi multiple inheritance okay with the d try to inherit that b comma c order is your you, it's up to you you can if you want to inherit c and d you can do that or if you want to inherit b and c you can do that it's up to you sir which in which order you want to inherit your parents it's up to you so i am inheriting in this order now what i want here is a uh, in this uh, child class i want to just use uh, you know i want to find some product here okay some take some result and in that take a method sum muller product anything is fine for me and for doing product what you have to do for doing product what you have to do you can use uh, you know what i need a from a class b from b class uh, and c from c class okay i am inheriting you know you have access to all that right got it right uh? so here you can just try to find the product of uh, a b c try this just try this simple example i didn't do anything here might be okay if you want you can try something okay try it sir test this example see if there are any issues then uh, We'll just make a note of those issues then you will close the concept of inheritance this is a complete idea about a detailed and complete analysis about all the types of inheritances which are uh, there in python Take your time and test this, sir. And uh, even I am also just testing it. Uh, maybe you can finish it. Your sites. If you want, you can input from keyboard, or you can do parameter passing. You can do all that it's up to you sir i'm just taking only one method here this time inheriting a to b here hierarchical 
giving every value to this. Okay, and then um, C is also inheriting just only A here, hierarchical, right? I'm taking one variable C here. I'm just saying uh, self dot A, self dot A. Something like this. I'm doing the product of same A variable uh, two times in the C class and assigning it to C here. Then uh, one more class, class D, which inherits both B and C. Probably all my parent methods are different here. If you see there, I don't have any common methods uh, in both B and C classes. So let me try to do some uh, sum here because as I have done product there, even if you if you want, you can do product here as well. That's up to you. Just going for sum and self dot. A plus self dot B plus self dot C. Okay. Just printing that's all. Just printing it. I'm not doing much. This thing here. Okay, I'm done with this, sir. This is my code. Then I should create object for which class now? If you just create object for D, it is enough because it is the bottom level class where that in this hybrid inheritance, many types of inheritances are implicitly involved. Now I have explained while showing the diagram here. You know, it has hierarchical at the top, it has multiple at the bottom, it has a multi-level at the side, you can see here. At the left, left, at the left layer, it has multi-level, okay. That's how it works. Got it right. And also one more important thing is, whatever methods are there in A, it is shared to both B and C classes. Don't think that uh, in the code, I have set A here. The set A method can be, uh, is available to both B and C classes. What my But I am not directly using it. Okay. So, but you know, the point is once if B and C inherits A, whatever properties of A class are there, both are available in B class and C class. Same properties are available. That is very important point because this is one reason we come and we get a an issue called a deadly diamond issue. Many people don't recognize it. Okay. So we will also check into that issue once we test this code after this. So D equal to D, then D dot what sir? D dot set A, D dot set B, and uh, D dot mal, and D dot sum. So we are done with all this different uh, this thing, for creating object, calling methods. We have done all that now as per the order of a calling here. So now go and run the code. B object does not have the attribute result. Okay, I got it. Do one thing now. Here, it has C, it doesn't have result. Right, right. Now run this. Got it right. So you see, 
Understood? Set A is having 10. When it comes to B class, you have 20. Okay. And then you are not printing it here. If you print, then you understand what you have there. You came to the MUL. MUL in, inside MUL, what you are doing? A into A. 10 into 10, you get 100. That is coming from, this is coming from uh, C class. Multiply. It is MUL method. And in D class, you are doing the sum of all numbers. That 10 plus, this 20 plus, and this 100. How much? 130. Got it right now? You understand it? Huh? So this is the idea. Suppose, suppose, now what I'm going to do is, if this, you know, if you look at this method, set B like this, if you have, that is fine wishes. Usually the issue in Java is this. Okay, so you have set B here, you have mul here. Now you are trying to get set A. We have an issue at this level, set A method. This D is trying to call set A. If it is Java or C++ or even C sharp, this, is, this is, leads to a deadly diamond problem. Observe this carefully. When you have set A here, the same method is inherited to B class. Just let me quickly explain this. Set A is there in B class. Set A is there in C class. Now, at D level, at this level, B class level, there is an ambiguity. These two methods by default are inherited from A to B and A to C. You don't need to do anything. They automatically get inherited. Now, the issue is for D, suppose if I say set A here, if you look at it, D dot set A. By now we get an error in a C plus plus Java C sharp, but Python somehow in Python they handled it. We don't have problem in Python. Okay, but here the issue with the deadly diamond is D has an issue whether to inherit which method, which set A from, is it from a B class or is it from a C class? That is the issue for a D in other languages. Got it right? There is an ambiguity for a D whether to get set A from B or set A from C. The situation there we call it as deadly diamond problem. Even if you can Google it, then it will clearly explain that scenario. Here, but here, even though when I say D dot A, set A, I don't have a problem. I don't have any compilation issues here. Why? Because here there is no ambiguity problem in Python. They have handled it intelligently by taking any one copy, either from B or either from C. Got it right? Because set A don't directly come from A, because A is not, D is not a direct subclass of A. Either it has to come from A or either it has to come from C. 200% I am, I am sure this is coming from B class. Okay, not from C. Why? Because as per the order of inheritance, we know. It will give priority to which class method? B class method here. So that set A will be coming from B. It is inherited from B. In that way, the problem is solved. In Python, when, when you try to inherit to two or multiple classes, two, three, four, or five classes, you can inherit more if you want. So, which method has highest priority if the methods are same? It will take from the first, first class, whichever is inherited first. That's right. Priority is given as per the order of inheritance. That's it. So, we don't have a problem here. That's why we didn't see an error. Otherwise, if it is any other language, by now, atom bomb would have crashed. Got it, right? So, this is the idea about what, my dear gentlemen, idea about hybrid inheritance. With this, I'm sure we have completed all the different types of inheritance. Got it? Yes, sir. No, sir. All of you are good now? All of you are good, sir. Tested this. Did you test it?
Please test it, sir. If you, know, if you didn't test it, test it. So you have the whole program here. You can test from here as well if you want. Just implement it. If you are done, just confirm, sir. Once you finish testing, confirm. Then we'll switch to the next topic. That uh, I told you, right? We need to have that. We didn't see the difference between static and class methods. We'll quickly just see the difference, and uh, then we will talk about next topic. That is polymorphism. Somebody please confirm so that I will switch to the next talk. See here, generally, you know, we try to inherit with classes, okay, not with references. If you want to go with reference approach, then you have to use uh, as a relationship, okay. It's possible not by inherited by with the inheritance approach, but you can do that with a as a relation, okay. Hope your doubt is clarified, right, Harish? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, guys. Sir. Finish executing this code. Is it tested?
then uh, another use case we need to talk is uh, i told you today we will have a quick idea about this as well that is a uh, static method versus a class method what is the exact difference here now we have done this in the last session this topic with uh, static variables and uh, class variables and then instance variables we have seen all that but this particular uh, difference i didn't we didn't have a discussion i told we will we'll, uh, next session today let's finish it it will take just some 10 or 15 minutes to get a quick idea about these differences let's go to the code directly because uh, this is a simple topic just to get a quick idea maybe you can also involve instance method if you want okay so you take a method here you know right how to define static method at the rate static method and you define something like m1 and then okay doesn't have any parameter you know that usually static methods are used to implement utility logic utility means something like uh, like mathematical logics which are common for uh, everyone every object such methods we declare it as uh, static methods like finding square root max of two numbers min of two numbers or uh, area of circle or all mathematicals like tan cosine all the such methods usually we declare them as static method even i have shown i have gone through the java api not for this for scale i hope even not only in python in any language the purpose of static method is that what is that it is used to implement utility methods utility methods means which are used to implement a common logic for the entire uh, application so that is one thing so if you talk about static that is clear with that a static method why do we need it why do we need it it is used to implement utility logics you hear this word number of you know in many languages utility means uh, you don't need to get confused here it is something which is related to this mathematical logics which are common for the entire application not mathematical that logic is common for the entire application in other words logic okay which is common for the entire application and one more difference is uh, so this is simple analysis i am just uh, taking a very simple example so i am just saying print or otherwise uh, just declare uh, some uh, parameters here pass for some parameters sub a comma b and c equal to a plus b just to show you it is a simple sum of two numbers and then return c that's all okay you don't have a return type in python based when you declare a return keyword automatically based on type of value written it will be implicitly knowing the return type so we don't need to worry about return keyword here i think we have done a lot of methods in uh, we have done a lot of functions in functional programming core python so this is this is a simple use case where static method can be used you no know, it can be used to implement a business logic like this a, an utility logic like this that's all suppose if it is class method you know right definitely a class method takes a, a parameter as cls and it can modify the state of a class suppose if it is instance methods instance methods can modify the state of object state means the variable we can modify the variables of object through instance methods through instance methods you got it right suppose you say something like uh, this is an instance method we have some uh, okay you can take some m here okay this is an instance sorry we will deal in many languages sometimes we get confused now you say self dot you say self dot uh, a equal to okay. self dot b equal to this like this now this instance method through this instance method this these are these variables are we could call them a state of object now i can have control to the variables of object through this method 
And if I want, I can change this variable, sir, by calling this one. Got it right. Huh? I can have an access to, to the state of object through this method. I can change the state of objects through instance methods. The static methods are used to implement a utility logic. And class methods take a, a class as parameter. And uh, this is used to change the state of uh, variables or which are in a class scope. If it is instance method, it will control the state of uh, variables or no state of uh, object with the instance method and class method is used to change the or it is used to control the state of a class means the variables which are said to be in the class code got it right the difference now how do you control it we'll see we'll just see a small use case here nothing more than that so just say return return of some cls you can see I can return two values in this time Can you see it now? Unexpected or Here also I'll take parameter. Class can return some data. This as a method. Suppose if I take I'll do one thing. First of all, uh, let us test it. A space A. A dot M. Pass two values here, 10 and 20. Maybe if you want, you can pass 30 and 40 also. That's up to you. Now, you know, with this method M, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to pass values to this. Uh, and I'm assigning them to that uh, instance variables, and I'm trying to set some data to the object. That's what I'm doing here. This method. And this is doing some utility logic. And now if you look at this method, I just want to test it by a dot uh, m2. So this returns some, something. First let me test and then conclude some result equal to this because it is returning some value. Let me print it. And then let me test it once. So when to use static methods means you can see here just a quick analysis this is also one good website for python so here you can see here it is used to implement certain utility logic like this a mathematical kind of which we have already discussed in the earlier sessions so Yeah, like this we can return, but uh, you can see here, right? That class method, we are taking it. Mm -hmm. Maybe let me do one thing.
let me take this as a, a, a constructor and uh, This has to work. This approach to the matter. I didn't have one minute. First of all, let the issue is coming from k dot m to it's coming from here only. I'm not even calling m1. I don't have an issue with that. Print is log uh, print. Uh... Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. That is one issue, typo. But here also I'm seeing in it, uh, or it might be a warning. Let me run it. Thank you, Madhu. Okay. Here I should pass parameters. So this is constructor, right? I modified this to constructor. I think all of you know the changes I am doing to the code. Yeah, I think problem should be with print, I hope. Uh, we'll, we'll see one by one. I made this as a constructor here. Then uh, when you make it as a constructor, how do we call constructor? Usually we call constructor through object. Like you have to pass values through object, not through method. This time I don't have M method at all. Okay, that is fine. Probably this should work this time. And then uh, also, what else? Sir? Um, this is only for testing purpose, nothing more than that. You can take another method and display those values as well. That's not an issue. But if you want to just see something, you can. So here, you can just say display and then print of help dot a print of. A. Leave it like this is about the first part about instance variables. With self, you can modify. You know, when it is instance method, instance methods, you know, or constructors, they they operate on the state of object, on or the variables of object. So we can modify the variables which are in the scope of object. That's what instance method do. And static methods is clear. The responsibility of static is also clear. People have a confusion with class method. Usually, class method is applicable to change the state of variables which are applicable for the entire class not for uh, a specific uh, object or something. It doesn't have access to objects, but it has access to state of object. What do we do is, uh, uh, let me run this. This time we can also call this method a dot display just to see the variables of, uh, a, you know, this constructor values of con values which are initialized in the constructor. Go to run and then try to run it. Required one positional parameter. What is it? So, comma A, comma B. Okay. Equal to that is fine. One minute. So, we have created it and then here on display, it's fine. What is the issue here? It is saying uh, we got 10 and 20. That is fine. So we are able to get values from that. Uh, but it is coming with this one. Error attempt to type error. In it missing one required positional argument.
don't think i need to send any parameters here I'll do one thing. I need to use this as well. You don't need pizza here, you take A here. And self dot we are using some pattern matching here. Self dot A. Save this. If there is a small initiation issue, we fixed it. Let us try this type. It works. Does this have any relation with the, this class? Let me run it. Okay. No, still the error is there. Why? Bro, I think you need to remove that. Huh? Which one? That uh, a square bracket. So. Then it is printing uh, address of that. Uh, I mean the tab. Yeah. You mean like then, square brackets? Yeah, yeah. Then then run it. It will take only, it is actually attacking only one parameter in this case. That's what I am just doing. Okay. It is getting uh, the same class name. It is giving us a, a class name here. Right? Then. And I pass it like this. Okay. It is returning the class name here, but we need the data. Yeah, I am. So we need to extract data. Okay, let me try like this. 
on this is it possible like uh, this uh, trying to utilize uh, is giving me 10 and 20 let me give 100 and 200 here so that it gives clarity so means what uh, this is internally calling some constructor if i am not wrong correct see it is modifying the state of uh, what is that look at it when i say a and b here And see this thing, A and B, the result dot A and result dot B. What is this doing here? It is trying to control uh, now this this uh, object, whatever the data that is present for this uh, object, might be they, it have brought it uh, to class scope. On top of that class scope, you are trying to modify it, and uh, that's what I'm seeing here. So, like you know, you have tested one example, Madhu, in some other session. You remember, right? Yeah. yeah. You, when you tried there, uh, the class scope, the variables which were in class scope had converted to object scope. You remember, right? Huh? So we had a discussion some time back. This time when I apply class here, so class is usually applicable at class level, class methods, and this class parameter holds the class name. Means what's happening here when I try to return these two elements, huh? these two are implicitly what it is doing is uh, it is trying to call it by default calling that constructor yeah, yeah maybe we'll do one thing we'll put a print here and if we get clear idea so that uh, it is calling constructor or not implicitly this is having some internal link with constructor and the whatever the object way variables state of objects were there they were you know brought from object scope to class scope and on top of that it is operating that's what i am seeing here as per the output so we'll do one thing we'll just put a print here just a simple print and see calling okay. just for an idea now i don't create an object let's leave this let's not test, touch it just to test this uh, m2 method let us see if that uh, print statement is getting printed if it is printing means definitely implicitly this uh, whatever the class is method this method is going to call that constructor implicitly and these values are passed to that and then the scope might might be changed here the variables from object scope usually instance variables exist in object scope they might be brought to class scope that should happen let us run it and test it getting see there can you see this guys means implicitly what class is doing i didn't create any object for this class see here i didn't create object if i create object then constructor would have, would have been called and then this calling I might have displaced means what is this class doing now this class method implicitly will make a call to the constructor and what are the objects were there what are the variables were there in object they were brought to class scope and then from class scope they can be modified that's what we are seeing you can see here a to a dot m2 now that reference we are able to get this a and b here means what is this class doing uh, this class variable or uh, this class parameter it is used to modify data which is applicable for uh, the entire class now we can see this small use case here let us just run through the go through this and read the statement that will give you an idea are you following what I am trying to tell you or am I confusing you guys? You can see here where we are able to call class method and static method just fine. But I have to call instance method fail with the type error. Leave about it. Now, if you look at this uh, analysis, So this one uh, to construct a string written by uh, this is used to return some string object by applying some uh, this thing you don't need to worry about it
I'll just show you the exact point with the class methods. Now you can see here, guys. We use this class argument uh, in this uh, class methods. We know about that. And for that, they use something called uh, dry principle. Means uh, don't repeat yourself. Means usually these methods, these class methods are used to avoid, uh, you know, calling uh, again and again reusable or oh, sorry redundancy. It is used to avoid redundancy. Most of the methods does that. And here, don't repeat yourself is the principle which is applied here. Now here, if you see here, if we decided to rename a class at some point, we don't have to remember updating the constructor name in all of the class method factories. Means sir, one advantage with this is. Uh, Suppose you have a constructor here. You all of a sudden you modified your class name. So when you apply this uh, class method, what is it is uh, every time you don't need to modify what is that uh, uh, your class names. That's what it is saying here. One minute. Let me give you clarity, more clarity on this. If we decide to rename this class at some point, we don't have to remember updating the constructor name in all the in all of the class method factory functions i got it you see here suppose i made this as a b right if i made it b of course leave it constructor you create objects right you create objects with something like this uh, a space a equal to something everywhere you create objects like this in many many statements now wherever you created a equal to a something there you have to go and replace it with the B, but if you create uh, something like this with uh, this uh, class method, then you don't need to do that because this class method, whatever the class name it might be, if it is B or if it is A, still this will work for this. Suppose if I run the same program, you see I modified it to B. Now, I, if I, if I should call in an instance where I should create an object for B, now I should change this. Suppose if I remove this, I cannot use A now. I have to change here. What is it? Uh, to call the constructor, I should change B and then I should call it. Suppose if I dependent on this class method, you might change whatever class name, my name it might be. Implicitly, it will call that uh, constructor. What Whatever change you might do to the class name, we don't need to care about it. That is one, one simple use case. But anyhow, now I'm commenting this. Now let me run it first. I'm calling here, what is that? Uh, Just make it as b dot uh, this one, of course, m2. But implicitly, it will call what uh, the same constructor. You don't need to, this. This is what this uh, class is doing here. This class method. That is meaning of this. All these are factory methods. Factory methods means which return object of uh, parent containing class itself. That's called factory method. So that's what. You can see here now if you decide to rename this class at some point we don't have to remember the updating the constructor name in all of uh, the class method factory functions so and also there is another good point i have gone through here static methods anyhow it's clear for us we don't need to discuss so here class methods don't need a class instance they can't access the instance, but they, ha they have access to the class itself via class. Even though we don't have access to self, still we can have access to the class through CLS. That's what it is happening here, right? That's what it is happening here, right? Maybe there is no self here, but this variables, this values which we are passing, what it is doing, it is passing to which one to the constructor here, isn't it? Means what is the point here? This point is very important to understand. Class methods don't need a class instance. They don't need object, but still they can't have they, don't, they can't access the instance self, correct? But they have access to the class itself via class. CLS, that keyword CLS. This makes the trick for us. Means what is it? To understand it better, this is a constructor. You don't need remove the static method, remove this display, all this. Just let's make it this 
simple and uh, short and sweet code. Now, when we run this with b.m2, what's happening here? Now I don't have access to self here, but I am trying to able to call the constructor and also I am able to invoke the instance variable. Suppose I, I pass three here this time. You see, let us just have a, an idea. One more work around here. Okay. I'm passing how many parameters three, but constructor has two. I am trying to implicitly able to access class parameters. I mean this instance members without using self through class. So run this. And you can see here takes three positional parameters. What if it is saying class is X taking three. Actually, your constructor is taking two and we should pass two through this class parameter. Can you see in, implicitly it is having control on this object without directly having access to self here. If you look at it carefully. You got my point, right? Do you understand, sir? Gentlemen. Guys, Sunday evening, huh? you understand the point now? Why this, uh, how this class keyword is used? You got it right? We have seen it with examples now. We have tested it. That should make it clear for everyone, okay? How this class is used. And there are few points. Yes. Got it right? You get this guys somebody say yes no okay this is no comment nothing like that what do you say all of you are clear sir this is one of the very good example so this kind of things are more interesting for us sir. and this point is also good this point you can add this point not the for me i i personally feel this is interesting point for me because that one point has so much of information these are you know anyhow static methods are usually used like what gentlemen so here we put it here This is interesting point and maybe if you want, I can copy and paste this whole stuff. You know, I would have used that pizza example only guys. You know why I didn't uh, again go for pizza means uh, I just thought just to simplify it with a simple example. You know, the same pizza, I can take it and I can explain from this website itself. You know, I found first of all this. Uh, my only thing is to show you this one, how this class method, you know, that the CLS keyword can also be used as a method, how it can be used in the code that is and uh, the impact of that in the on the constructor or how it is going to work, all that stuff. Okay. Got it right? Got it right, sir? Yes, no. What do you say, guys? Are you good now with this uh, class thing? Class method? The, it, what situation this in our, I mean, that this uh, class method uh, is useful? Uh, even uh, I'm not we sure. Can with the class method also using class method you can construct yeah. the class properties usually you know these are created as factory methods madhu factory methods is trying to return the object of same class without directly creating object for that class itself you got my point in a way, these are useful to create factory methods. Factory methods are very much used in many scenarios. You know, in a real-time use case, there are uh, 
uh, we create a number of factory methods. Even I, I have given a use case for factory methods, uh, even in big data, in scale also somewhere, if you remember, somewhere I have explained uh, how factory methods were created. Like come somewhere, like when while creating this uh, topic companion, otherwise after companion, I taught you what options. After options, there is one more topic we have discussed. What is it? Do you remember? I have explained. There I told you, these are very much useful to create factory methods. You remember, right? Yes, companion object only. Like companion object here, these are useful to create a, and return objects. The inst instantiation happens here itself. You can see here. We can do here and return it, uh, not by directly creating objects. Uh, you can do like that as well. Suppose you can see now. And factory methods definitely used in many situations. There are many use cases where we use the factory methods. It's a design pattern. You can see now. I didn't create any object directly. I just say this one. Now I am able to access this data. And for that, I am taking the help of which one here? Class method. Means sir, what this class methods do is this instantiation and that initialization, all that things takes place with this class method itself. It will take care of all that. Means sir, in a way, if you want to get more clarity, it performs something called pre-initialization on object. By the time you call that with the call it class method, it performs all that pre-initialization on object. It perform some pre-initialization on objects. That's what class methods does here. Means what do you mean by pre-initialization? Like, uh, like creating object, the object creation part or setting data, all that is done here. So, when you talk about pre-initialization activities like uh, creation of object, setting data, and that is written to us. All this comes under pre-initialization. In this scenario, definitely we can use this class method. Maybe if you are, as you are from Scala, this thing also. If you remember, what is that? If you remember, in Scala, we, we have discussed companion object, right? In, in that way, we can use class methods as well. Maybe if got it right madhu got some 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 correlation here madhu i am seeing that this one like that only i don't see it uh, in another way and static methods usually used to implement that well, why do we need them to implement utility log instance methods anyhow you know that like that class methods are used to do to create an objects to return objects implicitly by creating object and then setting some data and finally making your object ready for processing. That's what this factory methods, this come, I mean, sorry, this uh, class methods will do. And these are technically called as factory methods because when I call M2, M2 is returning object of B itself directly. You can say, when I say B dot M2, implicitly it will call B object with some data up to that here, initialized. Correct. For, for initializations and uh, for creating objects, uh, we use this uh, class method. But usually, I think, uh, again, we don't do it in uh, all the cases. Uh, there are certain situations where, uh, you know, you have that, uh, that data, even it depends on the data coming. That is also important. But for now, you can understand this is how we can use this. Okay. You can get some idea. Maybe if any use case is there while doing uh, further coding, I will remind you, okay, this is a factory method, this is a factory method. Got it, right? That's all, guys. Uh, we are done for today. Uh, we will meet, we will stop here, okay? Any questions? I don't, I'm not sure I have given 100% answer, Madhu, but I almost, no, we are almost near to the answer. Okay, what do you say? Uh, uh, we got it actually. So basically, what we are understanding is um, 
instead of creating object to construct the properties of the class uh, even we can construct using this class method also okay. because that is uh, uh, why we need to create one more object you know so that is this is also kind of one kind of memory management also correct exactly yeah, yeah. I, tried, I tried even um, so when we call that class method we can pass some uh, uh, parameters also to that same as how we are constructing correct even uh, here also in this you can see we are passing cls comma 100 comma 200 correct and cls comma a comma b correct then a comma b yeah yeah so it's almost a uh, companion object how we are handling over there correct because as you have that idea it's easy you know for you to correlate for others you can remember this as a factory method factory method in sense the cls will implicitly return uh, construct and data an object of containing class itself in whichever the class it is available that object is returned by this uh, class methods this this is a called as a factory method so what we call no factory method is something which returns object of containing class itself that's what factory method is remember okay Is it clear to all of you, sir? It's okay. We'll stop the session here. The next class, next week, probably we can close uh, polymorphism, all that. Thanks for your patience. You are like warriors, definitely. Got it right? Because you stayed uh, almost all for four and a half months of. Uh, Training program. I appreciate for your patience and uh, you know that interest in Python. Okay, we'll stop here, guys. We'll meet next week. We'll we'll go through polymorphism. Okay, thank you.